All right, we're going to look at section 4.2, polynomial functions in the graphs. In last, um, last lecture, lesson uh, 4.1, we started looking at the quadratic and uh, all of its parameters. Likewise, we're going to start looking at the parameters of just regular general polynomials and degree powers and, and figure out the graphs and their, their values of zeros and things like that. So. I don't know if you recall, I was trying to challenge you, hopefully um, question number 23 on the last lecture, you were able to figure it out. This would be a caption of that um, example that I looked at. If you compare it one to the other, you can see how I did this. So um, just so you can get a picture of what that work looks like for question number 23. All right, now continuing. <clears throat> It says right here, consider the poly following polynomial function, right? And ask, what is the degree of the polynomial? Now, degree of the polynomial is the highest level of degree founded by the power source. Now, remembering that if you have multiple variables, you add the, the exponential powers together, all right? So this one would be seven um, for this is the highest degree power. And it says identify the constant term. Uh, the constant term is that which has no variable associated with it. And we often think about it as x to the zero power because what is x to the zero power equal? Equals one. So the constant here is negative 117. Now identifying the leading coefficient is the number that's next to the highest degree power. So then the number next to the highest variable degree power would be three. And identify the leading term. Now the leading term is the whole entire expression combining basically the, uh, the three and the x in the set with the seventh power. All right, and that's basically all we have here, okay? Now you have various, you know, um, components that, Lead, I mean, you know, you have this one, 18. I mean, you, you go through the constants. Um, you know, this one would be, by the way, one ninth is the same thing as this, by the way. Um, and then, of course, the leading coefficient, uh, even if you put down the, the square root of seven, that's um, an acceptable answer. All right, just put that. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know why sometimes they put that. And then maybe the whole entire thing, the uh, square root of seven, x to the 18th is the answer we have there for the uh, leading term. All right, so I'm not gonna do any more of these. You can, you can do the rest of these, okay? Just note that sometimes they don't put in order, all right? Notice how five is less than 11, so just take note. It's not always in order, so just pay attention to that, okay? Uh, now it says using the leading coefficient test match up uh, with its graph. Now, anytime you have a standard graph, all right, uh, well, first of all, this is the third degree polynomial. And so you should know a little bit about the graphs of standard polynomials. Um, you know, degree power x to the third, it looks like this. Okay. x to the second, quadratics look like. Okay, so we want to make sure that we are, um, you know, we understand certain parts of what they look like. Now, the thing is, is when we put a negative in front of the x to the third, it just looks like this. All right, when we put a negative in front of the x squared, it looks like this, all right? So when we're looking at this right here, all right, this is a degree power of two, and this is a degree power of three. Now, what happens with degree power of three or odd value systems is that it goes up to the left and it goes, or up to the right, excuse me, and goes down to the left, all right? When it's going left, it's going down. When it's going right, it goes up. Um, when you're talking about a degree power of two, okay, it goes both up. And that is when its power, is, or when the leading coefficient is, is um, positive. Negatives 
it goes the opposite direction. So to the left, it goes up, to the right, it goes down. And then from the anything even power, it goes down and down, left and right. So left, it goes down and right, it goes down. So you don't have to go ahead and graph these to do this. All you gotta do is look at it. Well, this is a leading coefficient of five positive and it's an x to the third. So this is not positive, that would be negative. So matter of fact speaking, it's a third degree polynomial and it's going like that. This one would have to be A for that reason. This one's positive and it's going both up. So it's gonna to have to be that B is this one. So you're selecting these values for what they are. And now this one, both of them are going down. That's an even powered negative leading coefficient. So it has to be this one. All right, it's giving me a hard time selecting them. It's going real slow right now. All right, and the last one, obviously, x or five x to the third, and that would be this one. All right, so I gave you the answers, okay? And we have all the answers for that. But it's really easy to use the leading coefficient test with that, all right? So we have the value systems that we have, all right? So let's continue. All right, now, um, considering the following function, using the leading coefficient, determine um, that g blank to left and blank to the right. So this is negative even power. So it's this, so it's going down, all right? So it falls, as well as it falls to the right as well, all right? So we're looking at falls, falls, all right? This is odd, because it's odd, and its power is positive, it's doing this. It's, so to the left, it's falling, to the right, it's rising, all right? So falls and rises okay so we want to make sure we look at that okay now consider the following function this has negative even or odd excuse me negative odd so it's going to go ahead to the right it's going to go ahead and rise and to the left it's going to go ahead and uh, or right it's falling and to the left it's uh, it's rising so rises to the left, falls to the right. Sometimes I get my left and right backwards, by the way. <laughs> now, considering the following polynomial function, all right, it says, what is the degree of power? So it's going through degree powers, and it's like, what is the leading coefficient? It's positive 7. So then, because it's, its degree is odd and it's positive, then it's got to be this one right here, all right? So we have our answer. So you can do that same thing for this as well, all right? You can go ahead and see it's even and it's um, positive. So we're looking at that even positive, it's going to go both of them up, all right? I'll let you have this one. Now, four of the following terms are interpreted as precisely the same graphical features. Select all four okay so when we're looking at something like this it says four of the following terms are interpreted by precisely the same geographic features now when we're talking about that we're looking at roots zeros x-intercepts and the solution of the uh, output is zero so those are all saying the same exact thing as far as the graph is concerned so if I say, what are the roots? I'm referring to the zeros of the function or where it's crossing over the x axis, all right? So those are, what, those are just terminology. Now it says, let r be a root or zero of a polynomial function. If r is a zero of odd multiplicity, now we're getting again into terminology. If it's odd, it crosses at the value of that. So it crosses at the x value. It's in, if it's an even 
root system or even multiplicity, then it's going to turn around at that value. It touches it and then turns around. All right, so this is vocabulary. So if I gave you something like this, right? See how there's even multiplicity? And what do we know about quadratic? It turns around, all right? If it's odd, all right, we know that it looks like something like this. Um, that's going to, it's going like that. So it crosses. Remember what a third degree looks like, right? So we're we're determining the behavior and the pro you know the properties and parameters that dictate behavior on a quadratic or not quadratic but any polynomial function. All right, given the uh, the graph of a degree four polynomial below the complete table. So the root root four with x equaling negative four. So we're gonna look for negative four. It crosses it, right? It crosses at that point. So there's gonna be one multiplicity. But then at the value of multiplicity of one would be where it crosses over at four. And then when we, uh, one or four, one or four, we were determined the, uh, the, that one. All right, um, the roots are, uh, now when it's multiplicity of four or one, it says it's two or one. Now, we're looking at right here, okay, at the root system of four, multiplicity of one, because we have the value, it's crosses over there. It could be one or three, but um, I don't know what they're saying here, because that's odd. And then at the value of one, it turns. So that root system has to be one, or it's gonna be multiplicity of two, because it turns around. So I, I'm not buying into this right here because um, the roots of, unless I'm re misreading it, I could be misreading it, but at the value of four, it should be, um, should have multiplicity of one. And so, and then at the value of one, it should be multiplicity of two. So it should go one, two, one. So, and that's why you have four, um, Four, you know, four roots, four possible roots. So maybe, uh, let me see if I, we get this one. Okay, so five, right? So uh, the root where x is equal to five, go here, it should be multiplicity one, right? Because it crosses over there. That makes sense. Where it's multiplicity one should be, you could put down five or negative five, but um, I, I don't really like the way that they're describing this. Uh, this is not um, really ideal. I mean, because multiplicity, again, this would be zero. Yeah, see, they're doing the same exact thing with this one. So there's something uh, I'm not really fully understanding. Given the graph of the four, you know, degree four polynomial below, complete a table of values for either the x values of a zero or the multiplicity of that zero. I know at, neg at zero, there's multiplicity two. And then um, I guess maybe what they're saying is that you could put down negative five or zero, but then why would zero be multiplicity of one? So again, yes, while I'm going over this with you, I'm not fully understanding what the question's reading. I'm gonna actually ask the author of this. Um, I'm not really buying into this. I don't like this. Um, why is here? And here's the question: Why is it at zero? Why is it multiplicity of one when it's turning around? It's supposed to be even multiplicity if, if it's turning around. If that was the whole vocabulary that we just went over here. Okay. Um, touches the x-axis and turns around if it's uh, even multiplicity. So it's confusing. Um, hmm. interesting. Okay, I'll, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, buying into this yet. I don't accept this answer. All right, now, uh, now, but now that I've given it to you, it's just a matter of um, putting it in there. But I'm gonna put that on the test. That's for sure.
All right, consider the following function. All right, determine the roots of S and multiplicity of each root. Also describe the behavior of the graph at the, each root. Multiplicity of a lesser root, X equals. All right, now they're talking about the lesser root. They're, you know, negative 14 is the smallest root, right? Because it's opposite of this right here. And since it has two right next to it, then it's gonna, that's the multiplicity that we're looking for. Multiplicity of greater root, the greater root would be positive 13. And it is an, uh, an odd system or a one for its multiplicity. At the lesser root, x equals negative 14, the graph, what does it do? Since it's even, it touches it and turns around. The, uh, the greater root, which is 13, it's going to go ahead and cross at that root. All right, crosses at that x value. All right, and so this is being consistent at least to what we understand it as. All right, so determine the roots and stuff like that. The multiplicity of the least root would be negative 12. All right, and then of course that's two. Multiplicity of greater root would be positive one. And then it also, uh, well, it's six, so it's going to um, touch and turn around. Multiplicity of the root is going to be zero, all right, because um, you set this equal to zero. And then that's, um, it is four. Now we go through the three, last, or three numbers here. So we go through negative 12. Two, uh, not two, but one, and then zero. And then we say, well, these are all even, right? So they're all the same identical answer. Touches and turns around, touches and turns around, touches and turns around. All right, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and have this. Okay. Likewise with this. All right. This is a leading coefficient. So it's, again, now they're putting all combinations of things together. So now it's odd roots positive. So rises to the left. No, nope, it falls to the left and it rises to the right. So that's what you want to put for an answer. Determine the zeros of each. All right. There's one, negative five, and five. Now find the zeros of each. Okay. Now, I would encourage you to go ahead and use your graphic calculator. So, to find those values, it's not so much as needing to go ahead and you hit math. I will go math three. And then um, you can determine what the roots are pretty quick. And I'll show you this. So, x to the second. And minus 75x plus 75. Now this thing is zoomed pretty far out, so I'm going to hit zoom standard or zoom six. And now I can go ahead and and trace over this. I can see that this is at the value of negative five. All right, that's one of the answers here. I can see it's going to be at the value of positive one. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and look here and see that it's at five. I'm sorry you can't see my graph very easily. It's very blurry when it's because it's not zoomed in, so you're going to, have to tolerate that. So you can see the value. Okay. Now, if you don't like doing it that way, watch this also. I want to find this one. Like right now, I seemingly can't get exactly on the one which is there. I I'm gonna go ahead and hit second trace, which is calculate, and I want the zero. And I want to go left bound, so I want to go somewhere to the right of this or left of this, excuse me. And then I want to go somewhere to the right of it. And then I'm going to calculate and look at it. it's going to land exactly on one zero. 
all right? Because now I calculated for the zero. So that's determine the zeros and the multiplicity of each. This has multiplicity, you know, so you're going to go through the value and look at the graph. By looking at the graph, okay, that's interesting, okay? When we, when we see negative five, all right, has a multiplicity of one, one, and one. Because all of them, if you look at the graph, so you got to be careful. You got to look at the graph. And you can see that they're all crossing over those value systems, not turning around at those value systems. So that's why it's all multiplicity of one. And then we talk about the, the least, but they're all ones with multiplicity of ones, they're all going to have the same identical answer, which is crosses and, you know, that's it. Cross all that, those values. Now, to determine the y-intercept, uh, you can determine the y-intercept by, again, calculating. Okay. Now, the y-intercept, we can just look at it and see that it's at 75 because all the, it's when x equals zero, right? So these, these would all wipe out if we're doing zeros there. So the answer would be 75, that one. All right, for the, what is the y-intercept? So it'd be 0, 75. Determine if the graph H is even, odd, or neither. And that would be reflection over the origin or reflection over the x-axis, and or otherwise neither. Doesn't do that, by the way, looking at the graph here. And then here we have the graph, all right, use the above information, select the co uh, correct answer. And what it looks like, it's going up and down, up, you know, and then back up. So we're looking at something that this one doesn't go through 75. This isn't the right graph. This isn't the right graph, all right? This is the right graph because it goes up and down, up, and it goes through 75. So this would be the answer we're looking for. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just see that. All right, here's the answer. It's that one. Okay. Really important to look at your graph and do some comparison. If you want to see it on the graph a little bit better because all it does look like a bunch of lines, you can go ahead and hit zoom and then three and just go ahead and zoom out a little bit and see that it looks like that. You can even go so far as the window settings rather than scaling by one. You can scale by, let's say, uh, by two, all right? Uh, not, not so much as even the X value, let's do the Y value. The scaling value, let's go by uh, five at least, all right? And when we do that, it starts to change our appearance on that. So we're really looking at the output value. So let's change a little bit more. Let's change that by 10, all right? And now let's look at um, Zoom, uh, excuse me. Okay, it's not changing much. It's, it, it's like, it's finally getting to the point where I want it to, because um, it's, remember, see how the scaling works? If I go ahead and zoom in a little bit. All right, I wanna zoom in. All right, I still, I'm, I, it's hard for me to see the graph. So this is where Windows, let's just go ahead and hit um, Zoom Standard, right? Hit Zoom Standard, and then you go to Windows Settings and change it a little bit. Then that's when it's going to get better. All right, let's do this by uh, 500. Um, and it seems like it's not really affecting the way that it looks. I, I'm, not, I'm not happy with that. Uh, let me do it by window. Let me do this one by 10. Oh, and that's what it is. We're going to go ahead and do this. That's what it is. I, I'm remembering now. Uh, not so much as uh, that. I, I now understand what's going on. I'm sorry. Uh, zoom 6. I want to go ahead. And, when I change the scale, I need to change the um, the min and max, but mainly a max. I'm going to go to max. I'm going to do 100 for that. And then if I change this by 10, 
then that's going to be where I can see it. See, now I can start seeing things. Okay. So it's all about changing your window parameter. Uh, let's change that window parameter to 200. All right. And then see, now we can start seeing the whole thing. Okay. But it's crazy how f far up it goes. All right. And it, it shows you that basically by looking at this too. This goes up to almost 200 and something. Hey, I'm just trying to teach you how to use your calculator. That's the point and thing. I mean, you know, um, there's so many buttons you can push, right? So, uh, so anyway. Uh, now it says here, I said this is the same thing. We go ahead. I, I like to encourage you to go ahead and use the calculator as much as possible. So hit X. You want clear that out. Hit. Now, if you hit upside down B, you can control the uh, the power by doing it that way too. Um, upside down B. Um, it's the carrot symbol and it changes, it allows you to change the exponential power. So we have 16 X to the second power. And when we graph that, we take a look. Okay. It looks like a W. Uh, zoom three. And it looks like a W. Okay. So, but this is uh, a positive even. So it's definitely going to rise and rise. So that's what we're looking for rise and rise. Now determine the number of roots. G enter the number uh, enter the solutions using comma separated list. So determine the roots. Um, you're going to go ahead and you can calculate for them. So um, we go ahead and zoom standard, and we can go ahead and use our calculators and determine that it's at the value of negative four here, negative four there, and zero here, and then. Uh, and then we have another, looks like appears to be four. Okay. And if we're not comfortable with those things, we again, can't emphasize it enough. You can hit second trace zero and then determine what the value of the output is between these two bars. And then you can see it four, zero. So I, I went ahead and did it, did it extreme. I did it all the way over here and, and over there. Okay. So that's how you can do it. All right. So that's how you can find these values. Really easy. And then, of course, it turns around at zero. So there's multiplicity of two, at least, there. So we have negative four, one, four, one, and then zero, two. And then, of course, going through the whole system and this is and this has reflection over the y-axis so that it means it's even uh, excuse me and i told you that it's even before because remember this is even here and this is even here so it's going to be uh to all of them are even so it's going to be even even the, uh, the equation itself does that so then the answer is going to be this one this one's pretty easy for the graph Okay. All right. So the answer is what we just indicated. So this uh, continues on. This one would be neither because it's even and odd, and it's gonna it's gonna have a whole bunch of different things. But you can graph it on the graphing calculator and things. Um, and that's the gist of all this lesson is. Um, so yeah, there's just much considerations for you know, multiplicities and and behaviors. And what does that look like for the, the zeros? And I've now taught you how to use your graphing calculator pretty proficiently. I'm hoping that I showed you even the, the parameters and how to change the window settings. All that stuff is kind of important to know. So, um, and you see how I'm using your graph calculator to support you, all right? But that, that's, that brings us to the end of this. I mean, there's nothing really, um, else is going on here it just has different things a polynomial degree of six has the following characteristics determine the possible least degree polynomial that satisfies the above conditions and then so you have to go ahead and generate this based off of that all right you have a negative one leading coefficient and then you have the negative four is the opposite of that i mean these are really simple 
um, it, basically you're putting all these different components inside the equation. And likewise, you do other things similar to that. Okay. So this one's a really, this one's a pretty long uh, number of, you know, long lesson, long assignment, but it, they move quick as long as you know what you're doing. Okay. And you know how to use your graphs and calculator. All right. That's all I got to say about that one.